Hello there, Sir Fancy here and welcome in this video where I will show you how you can measure performance of your games from Oculus Quest. For that we will use this wonderful tool called RenderDog and you can download it from the internet right there. Now I have just refreshed the page. Okay, a link in the description of course. Make sure that your Oculus Quest is in developer mode and that you have installed latest version of Android SDK, otherwise it probably won't work. Definitely don't work. won't work. Okay, so now let's connect it and I will show you how you can work with that. You of course need to connect your Oculus Quest with Oculus Link, so that's what I'm going to do. Make sure that you also enable your Oculus Link in Oculus Quest. And with that click on the left down here and you can see new Davis here. Oculus Quest offline, so click on that and it should start connecting. Okay, looks like it is connected. It says replace context to Oculus Quest, remote servers ready. So now I need to start any game from that. You For that you need to click on that executable path and sometimes it is a little bit buggy. Uh, right now it works and it connected right to Oculus Quest and showed all the games that I have installed there or any program I have there. So I will start some of mine. Actually I will show you previous game that I have worked on. It should be hopefully a bit more optimized. <laughs> Uh, anyway, if it doesn't work for you, uh, usually what I have figured out works is to disconnect it, click on that again and connect it until it will show you this menu. If it shows you only a regular folder browser, just disconnect it and connect it again, it should work. And let's uh, connect this. Okay, click on OK and it will work for a while. And now you need to start uh, that game from here. So let's click on launch. It will again connect to Quest. It's established. OpenGLS is active, which means the game is right now playing on that. So what I can do is to capture frame right now, which probably would be just darkness. So uh, it's not presenting right now, which means that the game was minimized, probably because I don't have uh, my headset on. It will wake up once I will put it on. So let me quickly tell you how this works. You can capture frame immediately, which is usually not very convenient because you have your headset on and it's not really easy to click on something, but you can set up this uh, capture after delay and let's say that I want 10 seconds so I will play for a bit and then it will capture something. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now in, now in game I will enable this capture after delay and let's play. And you can see that it's quite a large file, it has 140 megabytes because it's saving every graphical information that is from that frame. So let's capture another one because you can capture as many as you want. I have captured third one just to have something a little bit more complex. And let's open the first one and see what we can actually do with that. It will load for a while but... Also make sure that your headset is always connected otherwise it will be a problem even previewing your frames. So first thing you need to look at is these statistics, which you probably can see if you just started it. So let's go to Windows and make sure that you enable it somewhere here. Uh, to the statistic viewer right here. I already have it here, so no problem for me. First thing you need to focus on is draw calls. This is most per important showcase of your performance. For Oculus Quest, it is recommended to have, uh, have it between 50 to 100. That's what you are aiming for. Right here I have 28, which is absolutely okay that game can play like three times uh, next to each other on Oculus Quest. So that's absolutely okay and it's cool. AP calls is 500 which is actually really low. That's probably because I'm using multi-view which we will be able to preview right here. So let's go into texture viewer because that's something you will work mostly with. Uh, please ignore this FPS, you won't have them there. I have it because I am using NVIDIA graphic cards and they are shadow plane. Anyway, let's look at it and you can see that I have captured one frame. It was frame number 558 and when it started, you will have to zoom out quite a lot because it's quite a higher resolution. That's how it looked like when it started. And you can see that this is actually a really simple frame. That's probably why it has so little draw calls. Later we will open another frame which will be much higher which should have much more draw calls. You can see that it needed to render two different passes for two different eyes. Let's look at number one. You can see that it actually took a little bit more. It took about 400 something, 480. It had to call 482 color pass and with other one it called only about 30 it seems so. So uh, 47. 
So you can see that it basically pre-rendered pre it in this depth and just moved it a little bit right here. Uh, that's I believe what multi-view does. So if you can enable multi-view, do it. And the problem is that with multi-view doesn't work mobile HDN. That's something we can talk other at other times. I will definitely do more videos about optimizing your game for Oculus Quest because that's something what everyone struggles with and I do as well. Hate it. You cannot see too much thing about this you can actually. If you click on these different elements, you can see what exactly it is rendering. With this first one, it basically doesn't render anything as it seems. So let's click on another one. Oh, it's just clearing buffer. And this, this draw was my head, um, hand. And it took about seven APIs to draw this hand. Then it took another one like this. You can slowly decrypt your frame and figure out which part is most expensive. Right here you can see that hand didn't take too much APIs, then it, it was added a pistol, another one was some smoke probably, which I can't even see, another, another one was floor, and you can do, go down there to see full frame. And like this, as I said, you can figure out what is most expensive and then work with that. And if you add other color paths, it will be the same thing. Or with multi-view, it probably just copy that. If you click on something which is lower, it will display everything that's above it. Also, you can preview Mesh Viewer if you want. Right here, we have, we have sort of timeline of these APIs. And you can preview different meshes. Uh, honestly, I have never used it, if you will, be my guest. Okay, uh, let's, tr let's try to open a different one. Okay, now I have loaded another one, and it should be much more performance heavy. Well, actually not much more. Uh, you can see if we look into statistics, I have uh, saved some statistics from first frame, so we can compare it. It takes only about 28 calls, that first one, draw calls, and this one takes uh, 33, which is still completely okay. As I'm looking at it, I still can play it three times on Oculus Quest. <laughs> Remember, 50 to 100 is absolutely okay. There is a very well written documentary on Oculus uh, website. You can read it. There is a link in the down in the description. Let's look into texture viewer. What is different this time? This part is pretty much same, but if I go down, you can see there is a whole new GDraw instances where it was done, where it was rendering uh, these particles. So if I slowly go one by one, you can see that it took quite a lot of performance. It took from 563 to 673 and other APIs, which uh, in the end was about, let me see, 28 to, it was about five another draw calls, which could be pretty much killer. If you have a lot of particles and your game is already pretty performance heavy, it will be, it will probably kill you, at least your performance. <laughs> Okay, and now I will show you. I will also show you the game I am working on right now because that's much less optimized, and you can see how bad it actually works. So first thing, if you look at it, it already has much bigger size. So let's open it and see how bad it actually is. I believe I think that I have disabled already mobile HDRI and enable multi-view, so it won't be that bad as if I watched it yesterday. So let's keep going. Also, I have made a video about optimizing that previous game which you have seen, and you can watch it somewhere here. It's on in Unreal Engine, of course. Okay, first thing you can see that it has about 38 draw calls, and what's worse, it has about 958 API calls. Previously, we had about 600. So that's something I will have to still work on. Okay, what you can already see that there is some logic happening in word tick, which means every tick of the game, every frame it renders, it needs to uh, make some logic, some programming code. And it already costs me about 16, or actually 30, uh, 30 APA. So about 40 APA calls. So that's something you need to be aware of. Never tick too much. And let's look at mobile scene rendering, because that's where we are. That's where we, lo we are losing most of it. Let's look at GPU particles per render, because right here I am use I am rendering some particles, uh, probably from this uh, laser torrent, and you can see that it already costs me, actually not that much as I was afraid it will, <laughs> but it's still probably not really well. Let's look into mobile base view and see where we are losing most of it. This is only the first one, so... Okay, uh, you can see that I'm losing almost 200 just by rendering this hand material and this uh, sword. So that's probably something I will have to reduce resolution or don't use metalness, something like that. Let's see about that and let's see what takes quite a lot of performance. 
I have actually just discovered I am losing like a hell of a performance just by rendering these materials. And do you know where they are? If you are cut one of these cactuses, it will create some material and that material is this world grid material and this default material and it's I'm co and it's caused because I haven't uh, changed that material there is nothing else and that's a problem because I'm losing like 400 almost of that that will be like five draw calls or something and that's something I definitely cannot uh, lose just a quick one I almost uh, forgot to tell you about there is input and output to figure out what actually costs something so let's say that I am looking at the saber one cube which is this one and if I go into input okay that's not <laughs> really what I can uh, actually say something about and uh, let's say that I want to uh, render this sword and if I look into input you can see that it's call uh, it's calling about four different maps so if I can by any chance can reduce it or reduce the resolution it will probably cost less you can see that right here in inputs and in output that's what you get okay that's about it I hope that this was helpful in any way for you Good luck with uh, debugging or and this is not a debugging but uh, figuring out what caused your game too much performance because this tool helps you quite a lot with that and that's about it i wish you good luck with your game and surf and say out